Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain you uh, a codices project that I have received from one of my viewers. Recently, I received an email from Jamal, Jamal Muhammad indeed, as you can see here, uh, telling me about a PSC program written in codices to be shared in my channel. And he has said that it's a good example of how to use state machines using the structured text programming in it. So basically in this example a blink function is made via a state machine and it works in this way when the on button is pressed the light will blink for five times and then motor will turn on and when the off button is pressed the light will blink for five times and then the motor will turn off. You can indeed uh, download the project from this link. I will put the link underneath the video so you can just click on it. Uh, well, then let's switch now to the codices project. Uh, as you may see here, in the project tree, there are three POUs or program organization units. The, the first one is the main PSE PRG, where uh, Jamal is indeed calling the first function that he has made call underline POU underline one. If we have a look at the POU underline one function block, you can see here in the uh, variable declaration part that there are these variables declared. The first variable is start trig which is of type r trig which is a function block you can see here that this function block detects a rising edge of a boolean signal which is applied as its input. Then we have the stop trig which is again another uh, example of a uh, r trig in the function block. Then there is the motor stop variables as boolean variables. We have state, which is an integer variable with the initial value of 10. Then we have call POU underline 2 block, which is indeed of type POU2 function block, which we see the details later. And then we have the beep count, uh, which is indeed uh, an integer variable with the initial value of 5. So these are all the variables that we have for the POU1. In the case of the main program, PSC underline PRG, we had only one variable, call underline POU underline 1, which is of type POU underline 1 function block. So let's see what's going on inside the the POU underline one function block. Here we have the variable state for which a case structure is used to uh, test its uh, value in it. As we had seen initially, it has the value of 10. Therefore, the first part of the code will be executed at the beginning. And then depending on the value of the state, because it may be changed, the other parts of the program will be executed. So in for each value of the state, whether it's 10, 11, 20, or 30, one part of the program will be executed. In the first part, when we have 10 for the state, initially the uh, start trick function indeed will be executed, where the input or the clock is provided by the global variable start. As global variables, we have two indeed variables, start and stop, both of them are boolean. And then the output of the start trig function block is checked, which is Q. If it's equal to true, then the start variable is set to true, and then the state is changed to 11. Otherwise, the state will not change. 
Then next time when state is equal to 11, the POU2 is called if the counter, which is one of the outputs, as we will see later, is smaller than beep count, which is equal to 5, then the POU2 will be called again with the input variable, which is of time, equal to 800 milliseconds in it. Otherwise, state will be equal to 20. When state is equal to 20, motor will be equal to true, and the state will be set to 30, and then we will switch to the next part of the case uh, structure where stop trick will be indeed called by providing the stop variable as the input and then if the output becomes equal to true then the start will be set to false motor will be set to false p o u 2 indeed will be called and the reset will be equal to true and then the reset will be set to false and then the state will be set to 10 such that next time we go to the first part of the program again now let's have a look at the POU2 in the POU2 we have these variables determined we have two input variables the first one is of type time the second one is boolean and then we have one output variable which is counter and it has the type of integer then there are these two on delay timers as the variables and then we have this integer variable of state which has the initial value of 10 and the output underline one if she is boolean we also have a case structure here for POU2 so if state is equal to 10 output 1 is set to false on delay timer 2, t on underline 2 is called with the input set to true and preset time is equal to time underline 1 which is the input indeed to the POU when the timer is done the state will be set to 20 when state is equal to 20 the output will be set to true output underline 1 indeed then the first undelay timer will be called with the same amount of preset time for the time delay and then when the timer is done the state will be set to 30 then we will have the timer undelay timer under line 1 receiving the input equal to false and the second timer's input will be set to false, therefore their output will be equal to false. And then output on the line 1 will be set to false, state will be equal to 40, and counter will be equal to counter plus 1, or it will be incremented by 1. And then in, in the last part of the case structure, the reset value will be checked. If it's equal to true, then the counter will be set to 0 and then at the end the state will be set to 10 such that next time we start from this part again so this is all about the the code then regarding the visualization we have two pilot lamps the green one is associated with the motor variable and the yellow one is associated with the uh, output on the line 1 of POU2 indeed. We have two push buttons here regarding the start. It is indeed uh, here where the TAF variable is set to global variable start and for the stop similarly we have the global variable stop. Alright, I guess that's all about the visualization. Now we can just log in and run the code to see if everything works fine well if we press start the yellow one will blink for five times and then the green one which is representing the motor will turn on that's true you could also have checked the let's stop yeah here indeed
we can have a look at the content of the POU2. So here you can see that the state is equal to 11 now. And then after a while, after having these blinks, blinks state is 30 for now. It remains 30. Now if I press stop, state goes back to 10 and the motor is turned off. Well, indeed here, as you can see, we don't have blinking of the uh, yellow pilot light when stop is pressed and the motor turns off immediately. Indeed, that's not something that we are expecting from the code as, you, as we have it here. And I guess you can uh, try to find out the reason why we don't have it here or maybe Jamal could explain us uh, if there is a bug in the code that it doesn't operate based on the explanations. Uh, all right, that's all for this video. I hope this would help you to understand how to work with the case and how to create uh, blink functions uh, using the uh, structured text programming languages. Thank you for watching and I hope I will see you next time and I also would like to thank Jamal for providing this nice and well organized code for us. See you next time and bye for now.